But anyway, some great things not that we talked about somebody sitting in a office situation or anywhere and they go to a website and all of a sudden you hear this blaring music and um, that's the fastest way to run somebody off your website is to put music on it. If you're going to put a YouTube, you know, they got an opportunity to voluntarily click on that. And also with photos, stock photos are not the best thing to use. Uh, you ought to really put a picture of yourself on there and your staff and employees and that type thing. It, it gives it a lot more personal touch. I'm trying to figure out how to do this. Well, just a basic just a model or just a basic photo that you can pick up anywhere clip art, clip art that type somebody's just not you oh, okay. something like a model or somebody else i mean it, it, putting your own photo there and, and and a little bit of history about yourself that type thing it adds a personal touch and to your business and in other words they get to know you just a tad better there's a reason that insurance agents and real estate agents put their picture on everything you know because they won't be recognized but it just gives you that personal touch and so um, another web, another thing with your website is no direction. What that means is basically you need to put your your features and benefits and the services that you want them to see on the website, and not have just be in all in all directions and having all your stuff on one page. We talked about categorizing and putting all stuff on each one on one page and, and compartmentalizing your info. And then your contact info, you've seen these forms where you fill out a form and you go to somebody's website where they click on contact info and there's nothing there but a form. You may not want to, they may not want to send you a form. You know, you need to put your contact info. They may want to pick up the phone and call you. And some people may not want to do that. But give them options. Just don't put a form there and force them either to leave the site or not to fill, or fill the form out. They may not want to do that. They may, they may want to pick up the phone and call so you put your address in there and also you can go to Google put your on a Google map put your address in there on Google map and then you copy that URL and put that link that is a link down there so you they can see a map of your business and where it is they may just need to know where to how to find it and they'll just drive there Right. I don't know how to get all of that stuff changed to reflect to where I am now. Well, it just it needs to be changed on the website. Somewhere in that HTL code and in the coding in the background, somewhere back there and behind that page, it's probably got your location in there somewhere, somehow. Maybe in the meta tag, in that title tag, or maybe in the description that describes your business. And you may have the city listed in there, and you don't even know it's back there because you can't see that on the website. But it may be back in that code behind there, and it's still bringing it up when they stick in the other town. And you just need to make sure you go back in that code or whoever handles your website just to make sure you've got all that, all the old city out of, out of the way. And put in the new city several times. So when they stick in the new city, it's going to come up in the search engine. Content overload just speaks for itself. Just don't overwhelm people with all your information. Just, you need to make, make four, five, six points. And if it's something else, you need to move it on to another page. It's just you don't want to overwhelm them. Where they, if they can't look at something and read it and get a gist of what they, in about 15 seconds, 20 seconds, you know, it's, it's really too much. You need, well, they can click and go to another page and get the rest of the information, or um, you just want to pique the interest and tell them what you're doing and how you do it. Yes? I had heard a few years ago that Google is reading uh, the audio. Is that true? They don't, Google reads the audio? Do they or don't they? I don't know. Um, I was going to ask Craig. He might know that, but he walked out on me. Uh, but but see in the audio you've got um, there he goes. I just he was talking about Google reading the audio. Is there a way they can do that, or is that just the text and the, you gotta put the alt tags in? The alt tags. Well, that's how they that's how they do it. They don't listen to the actual music, but the alt tags in a picture. I can show you how to do that too. But it, you put where you put, and you need to have alt tags in your images. Okay. Whereas you, if you pull up a picture, the um, all right. Let me get, get, I'm getting back out of, go in somewhere real quick. Um, if 
for instance, well, I can't do it here. But see, where we got this alt tag, where you got this image here, you can, you can right click on it. And this is where blind people, and I'm not being funny, this is where blind people have got these computers that they put their cursor over that image and it, you can tell in, tell in the text in that picture what, what your business is. They, they can't see this. So these alt tags, A-L-T-T-A-G-S, is what's inside these images. And you can actually tell, and there's literally been lawsuits with bigger companies and that have sued bigger companies because those images and alt tags, they weren't wheelchair friendly, so to speak. In other words, companies actually, and they, and they win. It's, it's like having, not having wheelchair ramps in a public building, you know, it's, it, you know, this, you know the laws. And so it's becoming a, an issue because of that fact. Now, if you go into, um, let me see what I got. Um, picture, save picture. I, can't get in there. Let me see what I can do. Yeah. But, but anyway, but there's a place that you go into the picture and in the back of it, it just says text and, it, and you can put in basically like a description. And, you, and as a matter of fact, it's another place so you can get some keywords in there that you can't, where it doesn't make sense. If you put a bunch of keywords, you can put leather upholstery couch repair or something because they don't see that, but it's in the code and it helps maybe a lot of times in Google. It also counts the um, so it's a neg it's negative with Google and them if you don't have alt text in these images if you, it just says image and there's no text in that image that's a minus as far as Google and them concerned. Um, so I was trying to see here. Well, I've got this up. I'm gonna, I was gonna start off with my Twitter just talking about Twitter with this site, but I wanted. Um, you, if you want a, the competitor, you go into a competitor. If you're using Windows, you click View here. Then you click on Source, and it brings up the code. Well, this, it, there we go right here. All right, you see this right here? We've got WeFixWindshields.com, then we've got Auto Glass and Windshield Repair Directory. That's the title tag. And I was just going to show you all an online directory of Auto Glass and Windshield Repair Professionals. That's the description. It just tells them basically what that... We didn't hit that a while ago where I was going to show you the title tag and the, uh, and the keywords, which I said earlier, not, don't really count right now, but they may start counting them next week as, you know, or, or on there. Now, but if you can go to view and source, you can see your competitor's codes in most cases and what they're using as a title tag or description and kind of see maybe why they're ahead of you in Google. Yeah. Yeah, well, as far as the basic code, no, because anybody, windshield repair or leather repair or whatever you're putting in there is fine. I mean, he's just stealing it. There's software that you can prevent that. There's software where they'll, just nothing comes up and it'll come up and say, thief, get the, get the, you know, out of here if you want to. But there'll be a message that pops up. You can get software that does that. Now, if they put your name in their website, you've got case for legalities there. You can go to them and you can get them that, if they, somebody sticks in, McDowell's repair and his website's coming up and you find McDowell's repair and his code you can go do it just like that go to source and view or view and source and look at the code on all his pages you can do this search there's a search box in here where it says uh, file and edit search and you can search stick in what you want and it'll bring it up and find it for you find right here you click find and you put in windshield or whatever you're looking for McDowell's repair you know and it'll look it highlights windshield so it's very easy. It's, it, all you got to do is find, go into edit and find and stick the word in and it'll highlight those words and find them. So that's one of the things that you can do with the, as far as the competitor goes. If something's coming up, you can go in there and find and see if, uh, if they've got any of your slogans, logos, or anything like that. Uh, but now going on to Twitter, it took me about a year and a half. All I saw when, I, some, when they started coming out, they started Twitter in 06 or 07, I think, 06. And all it is is a text. It's a, it's a, it's a text, but it's basically it's people that want to know what you're texting. Okay, that's all it is. So and to make it real simple, you know, people try to make a big deal out of Twitter and, and you know, tweet this or tweet that or whatever the case may be. I'm a Twittering. But all it, is, is, all it is is a text, like you're texting a buddy or somebody, but these people want to follow you and see your text and what you've got to say. 
And so every time you send a text out, they, everybody that follows this, your Twitter account gets it. So, but there's places that you can put Twitter accounts that will help you be like a billboard in your business. Now, you've got to keep it down to 140 characters. And people say, well, that's not enough to do anything. And you don't have to worry about impersonal stuff. Don't tweet, as far as your business goes, about what color poop the diapers is. You know, is in the, the impersonal, the personal stuff. As far as the business Twitter goes, you need to keep it to the, on a business level. Um, and it's 140 characters. And when you do the tweet, it tells you exactly how many characters you've got left. Now, if you want somebody to retweet you, I tell people not to make that tweet. Leave 20 characters available. Because what happens when they retweet something, it's going to say retweeted by Starkville Online or Starkville, Mississippi or, or my Twitter account, whatever your Twitter account is. A Twitter account can't be more than 15 characters. Okay, so that's another thing that's the restriction. A restriction. So you've got your Twitter name, should, it's got to be 15 characters or less. Then you've got a space in between, you've got another space here, and you've got RT, which is mean retweet. If somebody retweets your site, or you retweet somebody else's Twitter, if, they've, if they're at 125, you'll see it go over. It'll go over. Now you've got to use one of those twit longer softwares, to, and, it, and it turns into a website at that point. But you would rather not do that, because you don't want people to have to click on something to see your tweet. You'd rather be able to read the whole thing instead of them having to click on a tiny URL, tiny URL, is, you know, you've seen those if you're in Twitter at all, you've seen where people have got that, you see that little website type thing. Yeah, Brad? Oh, I'm so, sorry. Uh, what, what do you think the difference between uh, Twitter and LinkedIn? I mean, there, LinkedIn is a fantastic tool, and I'm, we're not going to touch on that too much today either, but LinkedIn is fantastic. One reason that LinkedIn is good because it's business to business in most cases. and. Whereas a lot of times in LinkedIn, you may just want to have your friends there. But again, as a business too, you can click and you've got all kinds of people wanting to be your uh, connection, as they call it, on, on LinkedIn. Now, you also can get a business account and advertise on LinkedIn like you can advertise with AdWords on, on um, Google or Yahoo, which I haven't done that. But they say it's pretty effective because mainly the business people are on LinkedIn. It's not the whole consumer, not the retail market, so to speak. It's more or less a B2B type site. And it started out as a job, look, job site type thing to make connections throughout the business community. But it's turned into a, to a pretty powerful platform. And there's things you can do there. It's just, we just can't cover all of it, but that's a, it's a good, that's a good deal. And, um, uh, but with Twitter, it, of course, it's, it always doesn't matter how many followers you have. Um, it's where you can put it. You can put this, like we have this Twitter account on our website, and this is one of our main Twitter accounts, Zebra Power. So I can, we can put in wheel straightening. We're on wefixwindshields.com, and we, this is our, one of our main Twitter accounts where we tweet about all our clients. We've got this Twitter account on all of our websites, all of, everything from wecleanseptictanks.com to we do Botox. But the point being is that if we, if we tweet about this, business wheel craft here in Portland they're going to see it it doesn't hurt anything they could be looking for wheel and they can click oh wheel repair and we put Portland in there so they'll know what city to look for we don't want them to be clicking on it there in Seattle or DC or somewhere but matter of fact we've got Mobile Tech Expo's got a Twitter account and see we follow them so we can retweet it now Craig tweeted this out a while ago where you can see tweeted uh when I, I lost my little, it wasn't working anyway. It wasn't working good anyway. But, um, but see the Mobile Tech Expo, this was retweeted. Now, and you can see right here, at MTE 13, this is a uh, hashtag. And you've seen hashtags where that's a search tool for Twitter. You can put in MTE 13, and if you're talking about the President of the United States, you could put Twitter, I mean, pound symbol Obama. But if something's going on like Sandy, during Sandy, when, it, when Sandy was hitting Jersey or New York, everybody was putting hashtag Sandy, and you could do the search up here and put in Sandy, and everybody that tweeted something and had hashtag Sandy, you'd pick that tweet up. You didn't have to follow them. It's like a news, like a news RSS feed. 
And so you can see what everybody's tweeting about Sandy and what's happening by just putting in Sandy. But what they had to do to do that and make that possible for you to find them is put a hashtag there, no space, and whatever you want. So you could, like we've, we're using, we've told people to use MTE13. So you can go and we can search and everybody that's tweeted and using this hashtag, I'm pointing like you can see me. <laughs> This hashtag MTE13, so you, when you put that in your search bar, anybody that's done any tweets about that has come up. Now, another thing that you can, but you can put, it's, it's a widget that you put, you can put this, your Twitter account on your website. Now, for instance, we put, you can put them anywhere. Now, we've got, you can go to Texas and go to Dallas. Now we have customers there, but look over here, we've got a Twitter account called DFW Area Tweets. And we've got Twitter accounts for all local areas, so we tweet about the local businesses there. But see, not only is it on the Dallas page, you can read those tweets. Uh, the last tweet on DFW was 14 days ago. Now you can go to um, any uh, Carrollton, let's check Carrollton out, it may not be, there it is right there. So it don't have to be just on the Dallas page, it can be on any of the suburbs. We've got a Twitter account called Detroit Area News, and every time we tweet on Detroit Area News, it goes on 30,000 web pages automatically. It's on 30,000 web pages. The minute you can tweet something, and it'll be out there. Um, but the, um, let me go over here. But this is a great search engine. You can go to Twitter and stick in something you're interested in. You can even pull up your competitors' tweets. See what they're tweeting about. See what's going on, you know, there. But you, if you're in the fence building business, you stick in fences and fence builders or something of that nature, all those tweets will come up just like, uh, let me go to this site here. This is, um, pulled up a Twitter account. There we go. Now this is Startwell MS. This is one of our Twitter accounts. It's a local one. And See, now, you saw the full house of Zebra Power doing presentations on web. You saw that a while ago on Zebra Power. Well, it, it, we also, it's on Start With Online here. So what you can do, you can retweet it, and you, and you can have the same tweet come up on, on many different. Uh, we can put it on Leather Repair. And we, if you're in Boise, we put it on Bel Boise Area News, Zebra Power. We fix vinyl, we, and we've got, you know, so you can put it on several different Twitter accounts at the same time. It's like having a little billboard out here. And what, you, and what it is that you can go to, you can go to the, uh, to the website. You just tweet something, 100 characters or whatever, and say, go to the website. And there y'all are. He took a picture and sent it up to Twitter land, and you're on TV. But, the <laughs> but anyway, you can do a lot. You can take pictures, and, 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 and all you got to do is, with a little software, all you got to do is just hit the right button or two, and you can... Take a picture of a car with a dent or the detailed, brand new detailed out vehicle that looks great. Just got through doing this car over here in Smyrna, you know, and take that picture of, a, of a, what you, the work you've just done, whether it was fixing a wheel or detailing the car or fixing the dent. You can take a dent before and after pictures and put them up in separate tweets on your Twitter account. But people are, you know, can see that. You can really use this and you can also put this on your website just like you saw it on our website. Now, you can take that picture and uh, put it on your website, now that, and that keeps your website, that, the content, the hits, everything, the travel. You can do a lot of stuff with that. Um, there, um, I don't know what else I need to cover. Anybody got any questions? Yeah. Right? Um, yeah, you elect to put the hashtags in. It's not automatic. Now, in your profile under Twitter, let me get off of this. Um, I'm going to sign in here real quick. What, how much time I got, Craig? What time is it? All right, let me do this real quick. I'm going to get off, get off the air. All right, I'm going to, and then uh, you put in, this is how you check in. You put in the Twitter name, and then you put in the password. Sign in. Now you've got a profile here, and that, that can be picked up by the search engines. This is the profile on your Twitter account. 
you get 160 characters to put a profile up. 140 is the uh, actual tweet. 120 in my book, because if somebody wants to retweet you, they can, you, they can do that without having to go over the 140. But on the... Um, is this thing not working? Wrong. Let's see what we got here. I don't even know my own password. Um, well, I was going to show you the profile, but basically they've got a place. Is that it? Is that it? I see. That's it. All right. You got a, um, you can go up here to connect and discover, okay? I was going to show you something real quick. You can put it in the search bar up here. This is just moving slow. All right, we can put in uh, MTE 13. Let's see if somebody's tweeted that. Now, so we're putting that up and doing a search on MTE 13. Is that where I, I don't know why it didn't come up. No, that's composed a tweet. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was just. That's how you create, that's how you find it. Now look at this, Every, all these tweets are coming up from different, tweet, from different Twitter accounts and they put in that hashtag in front of MTE13 so you can go search that on your own Twitter account. You could have looked up Sandy. You could look up uh, Oklahoma Joplin tornado. If you know when the tornado hit Joplin, you could go stick in Joplin, and you'll find people will be hashtagging and sticking in something. Wildfire in Colorado was a big thing. I mean, there were so many people tweeting about that wildfire in Colorado that it was. I mean, you couldn't read it hardly. It was just zooming, you know, streaming so fast. Um, and that's how things start trending. You talk about what's trending, and that's what people are hashtagging. Those hashtags, that's like a search tool, and that's when you start, somebody says say they're tw tw trending on Twitter. That's what happens. All right, look, I'm going to um, get off the air here because I'm going to cover Facebook a little bit. And Greg handles our Facebook. And the, you can also put Twitter on your Facebook page, and he can explain all that to you and how. But you can put Twitter on your website, your Facebook page. Every time you post something, on your Facebook page and you got your Twitter, Twitter on there connected to the Facebook, it tweets out on your Twitter account what you've posted on Facebook. So, and, but it doesn't put it on Facebook. What you tweet out on Twitter does not go back to Facebook, but you can go into Facebook and it goes out. Will it automatically put a link on that, that tweet so that if you click on it, it takes you back to the Facebook page? Yes. All right, go ahead. Come on in here. Let me... I'm not sure where we are. Let's, let me bypass this down here. Oh, see, I missed them. I've still gotten Q QR codes are very good. I can cover some of that. We got them on our business cards, but you put it that little QR, that little black and white square box that you're seeing appear on all these ads and everything. And all these young folks, mostly young folks, it's free. Yeah. It's free. You can do it free. Go to qrresponse.com or something. Just put it in QR, and it'll, and it'll bring it up. And it's free, and you, but they'll scan it, and it embeds it in their phone. Your information, name, address, phone number, click here, call us for a coupon. You can immediate action out of it. You can do a lot of stuff with that thing. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's just cool. It's just cool, man. All right. <laughs> Twitter leverage, uh, Facebook. Here we go. I'm going to let Greg. Yeah. Um, I'm going to let Greg talk to you about Facebook. All right, how many of you guys have a Facebook page? How many of you guys have a, a business page or a fan page? How many of you guys keep them updated regularly? Good job. Good job. Um, I want to get into is, uh, and I'm going to have to hurry along. We're in booth, uh, we'll be in booth 216 if you guys have any questions. There's no way I'll be able to cover everything. Um, Facebook has over a billion users worldwide. 165 million uh, users in the U.S. alone. That's 54% of the population. Man, that's huge. So you wonder, well, why should I worry about it? Man, worry about it. That's something to be, be concerned about. When 54% of the population of the United States is focusing on something, uh, the average person uses Facebook from 25 to 35 minutes per day. You know, man, that's incredible. You know, some use a lot more. I'm on it a whole lot more. Um, but uh, the who answers the why. That's, that's why you want to be there. That's why you want to uh, pay attention. 
Um, wanted to cover some Facebook fundamentals. Um, on Facebook, you're able to set up a personal page where you can have friends, where you can uh, set up your family, people you went to school with. Uh, I mean, I, I reconnected with a buddy from seventh grade, hadn't seen him since, you know. That's your personal page where all your friends are. Now, a lot of businesses have went and they have took their, their name and uh, like say Affordable Auto or, or Affordable Dent Repair or something, they made that into a personal page. And that has been a, you know, there was really no repercussion for that up until uh, just here this week it's going to begin. Uh, the business, the fan page, that's a page that you create off of your, fir off of your personal page where you get likes, people like your business. Now the difference is that when you have friends, you will receive their, uh, their news feed when they talk, when they comment about things. On a business page, when they like your page, they can receive your comments the same as with Twitter. It's like they're, they're following you. But you don't see their news feed. You don't see about their family. You don't see all that kind of stuff. Now they can go to your page and they can comment and you can interact with them. But that would be the difference between the, or one of the differences between the personal and the business and fan page. Uh, and the difference between friends. Now Facebook, and it, has anybody heard on the news Facebook has announced this graph search? What that means is that I'm going to be able to type in Dent Repair, Orlando, Florida. And it's going to bring up the pages that my friends have liked and it's going to rank them in order of likes. So that, that is really a huge deal because why, in my own thinking, why would I go to a, a Google and search when I can see what my friends, and I'm telling you, this is going to pull some, this, there's going to be a little shift here in how people search for things. Um, so if you have a personal page that is your business page, and I would highly recommend to change now or to go ahead and create you a, to create a business page. Because, and you want to start sharing that, populating that around, getting likes on it because people are going to be searching as this graph search begins to pick up speed and pick up speed. And it, it, it's, a, it's a directory now. So uh, that is a, a major change. The Facebook uh, groups, um, the groups, the difference in the group is you can form a group about something, and nobody will see your, what you say except for whoever's in that group. If people frequent that group, they're, you know, if it's something that everybody's interested in, people frequent it, they'll see your post. It doesn't go in anybody's news feed. Uh, it doesn't go out to everybody. Only the people who log into that group actually see your posts. Uh, so uh, that can be a good, it's just according to what you want to use it for. It's got a particular purpose. So you have to log into that group? You have to. Right, you have to go into that group and nobody sees your feed outside of that group except for the people who are in the group, unless they log into the group. So it's just kind of a side thing if, you wanna, if you're interested in uh, where I'm from, we do a lot of the ministry outreach type things and we have a group set up for that and there's some of us that are interested in doing that kind of thing. So we all keep in touch on a group and we know what each other's doing so we can uh, you know, come together and go out and do things like that. Anybody got any, got any questions before I move on about any of those things? What to post on Facebook? I mean, that's a big thing. People don't know what to post. You got a Facebook page, what do you post? You don't want to, you know, you got your friends and it can get real confusing. Uh, don't be a salesman on Facebook. Um, it's a social media site. You know, it's people are hanging out. They don't want to be in a high pressure situation or somebody hounding them. You can develop a lot of rapport on Facebook. You can develop uh, an understanding of what you do. You can uh, give you an example, there is a, a business that is not far from me who uh, is a, a mechanic, it's a mechanic, and I have a mechanic that I've used for years, but these guys really update their site a lot and it's always coming across my news feed, I've liked their business, so they're always putting pertinent information, they'll have a sale here and there or something, and I've never been there, but the other day my daughter's brakes on the car were needing changed, and I didn't think of my buddy that I've always went to, I thought of this business because I'm always seeing their their current posts. And it, they've never said anything that made me not like them, but they're always keeping me updated about their business. Um, avoid divisive issues. You know, uh, avoid, uh, you know, on your business page, avoid politics and religion, if possible. Um, you know, things that would divide. Yes, sir. SEC football. You don't want to talk about that. 
Yeah. That goes right on politics and religion. If on your business page, if you when Alabama won the SEC championship, if you say roll tide, you might offend some. It's possible. It's possible. <laughs> I'm just saying. Or if you say if you're a Georgia fan, you say, man, that was a miracle they won that game. And that Georgia didn't pull out, then you know, you could uh, put me back. But you want to respond to comments. When people comment, you want to respond uh, as quickly as possible, you know, uh, especially negative comments. This gives you a chance to interact with your customer. And negative comments, when you have a negative comment that comes across on your Facebook page, you can address that and you can say, uh, I, I'm going to send you a message so we can work this out. Or, you know, come up with a creative way to do it. And if you can get that person satisfied and they go back and comment on how well you handled that problem, everybody knows that there's problems in business. Everybody knows there's going to be problems in there. But if people can see publicly that you handled that problem and that customer is satisfied, that is a huge deal. I uh, wanted to show you guys an example. Got it. All right. This is a Facebook page that, that we manage at Cybercom. We began managing this page about right in here. And we began to put, to put this page out there to promote it, to talk about it, to bring attention to it. Um, you can see for this period of time, I mean, they were moving along and they brought, you know, some things in the case. I mean, they were doing an okay job. But when they brought us in and we began to promote, you can see they brought us in it was about right in here. And as we begin to promote, this is the kind of things that happen. You got 425 likes. Uh, it's went up from, I think it was down around, it was around 250 or so. Uh, this is people who, when they search now, when they search for restaurants in this town, friend, that friends like on the graph search, that's a whole lot more chance, a whole lot more chance, uh, 425. Uh, the friends of fans, this is, People who like the page, how many friends they have. Uh, it's up 23%. People talking about this, uh, 245 people talking about it. It's up 920%. What does that mean? That means people, uh, people commenting on posts, commenting on pictures, interacting with your, um, like if you posted a deal and people are asking you questions about it. On then their feed? On their feed or on yours. You know, if whatever's being talked about, if people start talking about a picture, start talking about a deal, start talking about the place, it'll pull that information from several different areas and compile it right there, people talking about this. Uh, and this is a weekly, this is a weekly report of, uh, of what's happening from week to week. Uh, the weekly total reach of 3,055 people in total have been reached. Uh, you know, whether they've commented or not commented, they have in some shape, form, or fashion been touched. And they've seen it, you know, or they've heard about it. Uh, and so, and that's what you want, and you want that graph to be kind of, it'll kind of do this and whatever, but you want that graph kind of going up. And over time, it don't happen overnight, but over time you begin to, uh, you begin to grow it. And with the new graph search that's coming, the likes, and as many times as you can share, um, uh, Cybercom's launching a new product, um, it's called I Can Share It, and uh, it, it, it's going to enable businesses to, uh, to get in and help share the product, just a tool. Um, and so, uh, there's, a, there's so many different things you can do on Facebook, and I have a lot of time here to go over a lot of them. But have you guys got any more questions? Anything you guys want to know? Uh, you, you can do that. There's ways you do that on Facebook. Um, Cybercom's uh, launching a new product to where you can, it puts all the pertinent information in the post where when you share a comment, when you share a deal, you don't have to worry about retyping all of your information, your, your name of your company, your web, your web address or whatever you want to put in that. It's already there for you. It's like it's a little format for you. Um, it can be used in a lot of different ways. You can use it and get some of your customers, give them a discount. And you know, hey, if you'll share uh, five percent off if you share, uh, go to I can share it and share on your Facebook page. You know, there's, there's a lot of different ways. It's just uh, the variables are astronomical of how many ways it can be used. So, yeah. That about wraps it up. Just not enough time to go over everything. Mm -hmm. uh, like a quick reminder, like for anyone who we started, and I don't know if you touch on it or not, but I think once you get 25 or 30 
30, 30 likes. 30 likes. Yeah, you, you can see all this right here after you get 30 likes. Yes, absolutely right. Yeah, that is according to your, what your goals are as a business. Um, you know, it can differ with every business, but uh, you could certainly try it uh, and, uh, and see what the results are, you know. Um, I mean, I, I know businesses that have done it and had good results and businesses that did it and didn't. I mean, it's all a, you know. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, we've talked about LinkedIn a while ago, and LinkedIn, I suppose, has got a lot better platform for that. That, you know, you can use those keywords and stuff, and it brings up the members are, that are already in LinkedIn. When they bring up their page, it's sort of like Googling that and the aspect that it that takes that relevant information and brings up your ad. So somebody, the person that sees it, they're using their background and profile information and everything to put your ad up because they're going to be interested in seeing that more so than somebody that's not. So they match up the ad that's going with the person when they pull up their file. That's when your ad comes up. LinkedIn is supposed supposedly, and I haven't done it. I haven't tried it, but from what I've read, it works real well. And that's another thing that Facebook's still kind of struggling with a little bit because of the fact that everybody on Facebook has got all these friends, and they're just it's a social. That's a real social aspect that they don't have any particular. It's kind of like putting in the keywords, and you've got all kinds of keywords there, and it's diluted. So that, that uh, is the problem with Facebook right now. But it, but it does work. And, you know, they're, they're making a lot of money doing it. But I, LinkedIn, we, we, we talked about that, it works better. Um, anyway, that's, is, anybody got any other questions? I, we're, we just, we, we're coming up, we're always trying on the cutting edge to in, in, integrate and incorporate. Facebook or Twitter with our directories and and I'm, I'm telling you there's some uh, sites in there I, I was showing a while ago that the difference between Twitter now and Twitter two years ago in social media has gone up like 20 times or something I've got those ads uh, oh is it? the uh, yeah here it is right here this was uh 52 cool facts this was in uh this is 2012, this was 2010. The same facts, and they're talking about cool facts of social media, and this guy came back two years later and wrote it again. The average Facebook user has 130 friends and 25 billion pieces of content goes out now. 300,000 users help translate the site. 150 million engage with Facebook every month. Now, if you go to 12, if you remember those numbers, This guy's talking about 350 million users. What was it before? Now there's 350. There was 100 or 150. Is that what it said? 25% of users don't bother with any kind of privacy control. The average, book, the average Facebook user has 130 friends, so that, that really hadn't changed. It's just a whole lot more users out there than with that 130. So you can take that, that 350 million times 130, that's reaching a lot of people, and that's what that product we're talking about is that if somebody could have 2,000 friends on their Facebook page. Now, if you can go over there and put a little ad, or say, look, let me let me get in contact with your 2,000 friends. I'll give you a, a free detail. I'll give you a, a discount. I'll knock out of those deans if you let me do that. You got 2,000 friends on your Facebook page. Let me put your ad over there, and it's real easy to do it. You just put your phone number in, and bing. And that's something that can that can that you can run with. And there's a way to get your name in front of all of their friends. And if you've got another friend, so I mean, if you've got 200 friends, and it's just like the 400 was it 400,000 or 4,000? I mean, the friends of friends that you said on that Stagger Ant had. The friends of fame. Yeah. 173,000. 173,000. Okay, so you can reach a whole bunch of people. And uh, and in many cases, I mean, for a for a local business, in many cases, most of those people are going to be local, where you are. And then if you multiply that times two, three, four, five, or six, you know, you can really look. And it's, it's not expensive. It's, we're not talking yellow pages. We're not talking 600 bucks a month. We're not talking any money here. That's the whole key. It doesn't cost much. So, um, all right, this scroll down here for a minute or two on this. On LinkedIn, two new members sign up to LinkedIn every second. LinkedIn has 161 million members in more than 200 countries. They're on track to make more than 5.3 million searches on the platform in 2012. 
Their revenues doubled every quarter for the last two years. More than one million LinkedIn groups. I'm on two or three groups in LinkedIn myself. Uh, one of them's like the National Federation of Independent Businesses. I'm not pushing them. I'm just, I'm one of their, I, I pay their little fee and I belong to them. But they've got a heck of a little active group on, on LinkedIn where all the small business people are in there talking about the problems and the solutions and the formats and things going on in their businesses. And it, you can pick up a lot of good stuff by being in one of those groups. Uh, but that's what, and, and then again, you can always blur, put a blurb in about what you do, you know. When you're in Toledo, you have a broke windshield, give me a call, that type thing. I mean, it's, uh, what they're going to do, come burn your house down? Pinterest is getting huge. Now, I don't know anything about that. My wife uses it for recipes and stuff. And I, you know, again, there's all, Google Plus is something you're going to have to watch because right now it's the same as Facebook and that's what they're going after where you can pick in circles and you got different friends of circles. Okay. You got different you got different circles of friends. You might you got friends in the car business or you got friends in church. You got friends here. Or you could do local, you know, people in Atlanta, people in Dallas, people in Detroit. But you can group your friends together. That's what Google Plus is and create these different circles. Not very many people are using it yet, but Google's not gonna give up and they got too much money. And if you put those little Google ones next to your business and it's just like those likes that Facebook's talking about, the more times somebody clicks on that little Google plus sign next to your name, the more the closer to the top Google's gonna start putting you. They, they're gonna have trash sites up at the top of Google. Okay, relevancy ain't gonna have no, I'm telling you, they, are, they got money and they're on a war with Facebook and Bing and Yahoo and everybody else. The number of likes, which, which is the same thing, when you click that little Google plus button, the more people you can get to click it, the better you're going. Google's going to start putting you at the top of the search engine, so it's going to create a frenzy of people wanting to. You're going to have people calling the Rotary Club. I'll give you $1,000 if you'll have, you have all your members go over here and click my like button. <laughs> I mean, it'll be worth it. Can you imagine getting to the top of Google in a big industry? You, they're going to be paying people to go click their buttons. Get your mind out of the gutter. All right, so anyway, mobile phones is another thing. Right now, it's about 10%. Your websites are going to have to be transferred over for mobile use, and apps is a good way to do that. We're doing some apps now. It's pretty cool. But all an app is, you know, there's an app for that type thing. You download it. It's got your little icon on there, and you can have every page of your website on there, and it's specifically, and it doesn't cost a lot. I've seen people that charge a fortune because they make sure they think everybody is rocket science or something. But the point being is it's for mobile use. And it comes up, it's designed for the phone, designed to come up on a, on a phone device. And it's, look, I mean, it's just it's skyrocketing. Right now it's 10 to 15%. It's just according to, and it's gonna double. They're saying it's gonna double every two to three years from now on out as far as the number of phones and people that are looking up searching on their phones instead of their laptops. And then when you get a phone like, when you get a phone like this right here, it's very easy to do. It's like a laptop almost. But, I mean, the phones are getting bigger, it, right in between the little bitty phones and the tablets. Something that, you know, it's not, you don't have to carry the the tablet around with you even. So um, it's going to get to where people are going to be searching. And the younger the demographic is, the more they're going to be searching. The younger they are, the more they're going to be searching on the phone. My my 22 year old and my 18 year old, they, they don't even have a. a a laptop they, they may use at school, but they're never on it. They're on that. They're on that iPhone doing this all day long, and they're searching whatever they want to search, and, and that's it. You know? All right, I've got to quit. I've got the high sign. The fish can kick me out. But I enjoyed it. Look, if y'all have any questions about Facebook or anything else we've talked about, it's just we didn't have time to hit on anything hardly as you you know in 45 minutes. We're, we've got a booth at 216 tomorrow. We'll be we'll be in the in the trade show hall. Come by. We give you we give you. A, Give you a coolie or koozie or something. Also, <laughs> and, uh, this session and all the links will be posted on zebrapower.com tomorrow. You'll be able to see the first session. We also recorded that as well. So go to zebrapower and review this and see the links that Dennis shared with you and the great share with you.